sir. You the boss here. Can I help? Sir. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking, uh, a statement. Yeah, that's the word. I want to make a statement. OK, well, let's start with your name. Well, I can't tell you that here, can I? Everyone will hear. They'll know. You see? You see what happens when they know? Is that recent, sir? Are you in charge here? I want someone who's going to take proper notice. No offence. OK. Everything all right, Polly? All units from Sierra Oscar, 6 Wellstead Street. Suspect on premises. And yeah, we'll take that. Someone go round the back. Sierra Oscar from 487. Show us dealing, Sarge. Right. We can speak in here. It's private. You're a sergeant, aren't you? Yep, that's right. Sergeant Cryer. And you are? Todd. Todd Grant. That's short for Edward. That's what Mum and Dad used to call me. Right, OK, Mr Grant. Would you like to tell us what happened? Sit down, if you like. I've done something bad, Sergeant. Something terrible. I've done someone over. You assaulted somebody? Yeah. When was this? Uh, a few hours ago. Can you remember where? There were a lot of cars. Car park? Yeah, car park. Uh, there was a barrier. Bright red. OK. Not a good colour for me, bright red. Not good. Not good at all. OK, right. Now, this is important. Can you remember who you attacked? Was it somebody you knew? A mate? Oh, that's the problem. I never saw him before in my life. I gave him a good kick in, Sergeant. I'm ill. I should be locked up. That must be her there. Thank goodness you're here. Did you contact the station? Yes, love? I'm Mrs Oakes. I live opposite at number 15. He went straight down the side. Did you get a good look at him? Sorry, too quick, love. I didn't have my glasses on. Oh, it's all right, Mrs Oakes. You stay there. We'll deal with it. Steve? You've got to go. We're getting in. Someone must have disturbed him. Sierra Oscar from 487 receiving. Go ahead, Cathy. Yeah, we're at Wellstead Street now, Sarge. There's been an attempted entry. So what do you think, Bob? We should take him seriously? Well, it's a serious offence. A possible offence. And we've got his injuries. Which could be self-inflicted, couldn't they? Or an accident. You said he seemed disturbed. Well, that was my impression. Have you done a check? Yeah, nothing's come up. So, he's confessed to a crime we don't even know happened, but we can't arrest him, especially not if he's mentally ill. No, but he'd just get up and go. What then? Well, I'd like to keep him here informally while I make some inquiries. You know, check with St. Hughes, see if anyone's turned up that could be our victim. OK. I'd also like the FME to come in and give him a medical. Are you sure? Well, I think he should be examined. It'll give me a couple of hours to sort things out. But is it a proper use of resources? As Chief Inspector Stritch would say, it's not our job to be policing the walking wounded. Two hours, Max. Go on, then. Keep me posted. You found him? No, but he tried to get him round the back. Oh. Who lives here, do you know? An old lady. She died about a month ago. I saw the undertaker come. Did you know her name? Sorry, love. Anything, Steve? No. Good try the neighbours. Well, they won't know anything either. The old dear was housebound. She had everything delivered. Thanks for your help, Mrs Oakes. Where's the doctor? She's on her way. Good. I'll be all right when she gets here. She'll sort me out. Stop all these, uh, you know. Another cup of tea? I'll finish that one like a good boy. More sugar, though, and a biscuit. Todd? Something chocolate. Mr Grant? Have I done something wrong? No. But you're not being very helpful either, are you? After what you told us, I contacted the hospital to see if anyone had been into casualties, such as you described. Oh. Now, nobody went in this morning, but I had someone in yesterday afternoon. Someone who sounded like the person you described. So I've sent two officers over there to have a word with him. And when he came in off the street, it was in a pretty bad way. 
claimed that he tripped over his whiskey bottle. But the staff said that he'd taken a good old-fashioned kicking. How bad? Bad enough. Do you know anything about this, Todd? No. You sure? Yeah. I mean, no. You got me all confused, Sergeant. Where's the doctor? When's she coming? I'll be all right once she's sorted me out. I'll remember everything then. Yeah. Sarge, the FME's here. Right, thanks. That's the doctor. Come on, Todd. Like I told you, Sergeant, he came in yesterday afternoon, but he could be the person you're looking for. Mr. McCauley. Lord! He gave me a start. Oh, I'm sorry. What are they doing here? We'd like a word with you, Mr. McCauley. I must get back. Thanks a lot. What do you want? We thought you might like to tell us what happened to you. Why? I didn't ask to make a statement, did I? No, but the staff think you might have been the victim of an assault. You were afraid to come forward. The only thing I was a victim of was a bottle of whiskey. Come on, Cass. Hang on, Steve. Mr. McCauley wanted to know why we were here. Someone came into Sun Hill this morning, confessed to a serious crime, an assault. His name was Grant. Todd. You know him? Yeah, I know Todd Grant. He's a mate. I met him at the hostel in Goddard Street. He lives with me now. Did he assault you? Did he say that? He claims to have attacked someone. He didn't say who. <laughs> good old Todd. I hope he did for him good and proper. You're saying you know who Todd might have attacked, are you? I'm not saying any more. I stick by my mates. Have you finished yet? Yes, Mr Grant. That's everything for you. I'm bad, aren't I, Doctor? Doctor will tell you I'm, I'm an ill man. I need help. I'm a medical doctor, Mr Grant. Your mental state is not my area of expertise. Well, would you take Mr. Grant back to reception? Sure. Go on, Todd. What do you think, Hilary? Physically, he's in an okay state. A bit underfed. He's been in a fight recently, but the injuries are minor. But up top, he's confused and obviously disturbed, perhaps psychotic. I'll have to recommend further assessment by a trained social worker. Polly? Would you like to sit there, please, Todd? Much longer, Sergeant. As long as it takes. Polly, keep an eye on Mr Grant for me, please. I've got a few more inquiries to make. All right. Mr Grant, do you want anything? Another cup of tea. Sarge. Oh, right. Just got back from St Hughes. We yeah. spoke to Mr Macaulay, or tried to. Yeah, he's an old drunk. Doesn't want to get involved. Whoever attacked him, though, it wasn't Grant. No? No, they're big buddies, apparently. Look out for each other. When he heard what had happened, he was pleased as punch. So there's no help at all? He gave us an address, the hostel on Goddard Street. Grant lived there for a while. Right, thanks. I'll get down there and see if someone can enlighten me. A psychological assessment? Yes, the FME's examined Mr Grant and thinks he's displaying certain symptoms. What symptoms? She thinks he could be having a psychotic attack. Mm, that's her opinion. Of course, sir. That's why she recommends an assessment by a trained social worker. Sort out a shrink for Mr Grant if you have to, but be quick about it so we can get him out of the station and off our hands. Yeah? I'm uh, looking for the manager. That's me, Dave Boyd. What can I do for you? You know anything about Mr. Todd Grant? <laughs> That's a long story. You better come inside. Yeah, I know Todd. Came here about 18 months ago in a close from Jacobs down, slung them all out. How did he settle in? All right to start with. Kept his head down, took his pills. Behind them comes Harris down, lady. Yeah, good with his hands, fixed my motor. Really? Well, he was doing his city and gills when he first got ill. His parents died in a coach crash in the Lake District some time back. Terrible for a youngster, that. He just fell apart. Do you know of any other family? Well, his grand lived nearby. He wanted to move in with her. She weren't too well. Couldn't look after him. Ah, oh, nice kid. Straight. Went down to book his for me. Lucky, too. So no problems? Well, you want no angel. He had his moments. Was he ever violent? So he's in trouble for? Manner of speaking. Well, no, not really, but, uh... Yeah? You better come with me. Is this his room? Well, it was, till I chucked him out last month. What? Well, I had to, didn't I? For the sake of the other residents. He started acting funny again. I did warn him. And he goes and does something like this. I mean, it's the last straw. Look, 
All I do is look after these people, Sergeant. I put a roof over their heads and I keep them off the streets. I do the best I can by them, but I'm not a charity. This is my living, all right? Hello. Can I help you? I'm Mrs Oakes. I reported a burglary earlier, Wellstead Street. One of your colleagues said I should tell you if I remember Hang the... on a minute, madam. Are you all right, Todd? He said I should tell you if I remembered the name of the old lady who lived there. Well, I did. She was called Mrs Parker. Oi! Hang on a minute! What's going on, Paul? I don't know. He's just scarpered. It had been a bit jumpy, but I just thought, well, you saw the way he was. Yeah. He had been listening. Listening? To Mrs Oates. He might have heard what she said about the house. He belonged to a Mrs Parker. Maybe the name struck a chord. George went after him. It's OK, Polly. You did what you could. Thank you. So what's the link? I don't know, Bob. Anything could have set Todd off. Besides, it doesn't really matter anymore, does it? Well, it's not our problem. Well, if Canley Social Services did their job properly, it wouldn't have been our problem in the first place. <laughs> they would if they had Chief Inspector Stritch breathing down their necks. Sarge, it's that Mrs Oakes again, Wellstead Street. What? She says there's another suspect at number six. What, the same bloke as before? No, a different one this time. Apparently he's got inside the house. Well, let's see if we can catch this one, shall we? Quickly, come on, Mrs. come Mrs. is it? Yeah, I know he's still in there, cos I've been watching. Well, what you're waiting for is only a weedy little thing. Serious way, wait, did you? No. Mr. McCauley was found collapsed outside the bookies in Askill Road. Why did you discharge him? I didn't. He discharged himself against our advice. He seemed determined to get out as quickly as possible. Went straight down the bookies. He saw Mona changed after you visited. He seemed a lot better and we were to go. I don't know what you said to cheer him up, but it certainly did the trick. You sure it was Grant? He matched the description, sir. You all right, Dave? Yeah, fine, sir. Just, um, just a bit winded, that's all. Where did he come from? Upstairs, the bathroom. He just shoved me up against the banister. I'll take a look up there. Prednisolone. Steroid, Sarge. Use it to treat arthritis. Right. Is this the man you disturbed? Yeah. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, that's Todd Grant. Boys said that his grandma and I used to live local. This must have been her place. Oh. Sir! Look at this. Buried treasure, eh? Hello, Mr. McCauley. I'm Inspector Munro, and this is Sergeant Cryer. I'm honoured. A visit from royalty. So, how are you feeling now? Top of the world, officer. Nurse Stubbs said that soon after you spoke to Constables Marshall and Loxton, you left here and you were a different man afterwards. You do realise that you're in no fit state to discharge yourself? See, I thought I knew who Todd beat up. Who was that? Boyd. The man who runs the hostel. Yeah, he'd been putting the frighteners on Todd for some time, telling him he wanted the money from his grand's house. He had a load put away somewhere. We know, Mrs Parker. She told Todd it was his when she'd gone. That's how he could offer to pay for the damage to his room. He offered to pay? That's right. Boyd found out there was more. How did he find out? I only went and told him, didn't I? Todd used to slip me an extra ten, I see, and when I'd had, you know, me and my big mouth, I, I just wanted Boyd to know what he'd lost when he kicked Todd out. OK, so what happened then? Boyd put pressure on Todd. Yesterday he came round to the squat with a baseball bat, steaming. He goes for Todd, but I got in the way. That's when Todd ran off, came to us, scared out of his wits, invented a story and hoped that we'd lock him up. I thought he got his revenge. I was laughing. And who do I see coming out of the betting shop? Boyd.
My Macaulay. That's right. Nah. Don't know who you're talking about. He says that he knows you. Says that he met you down the betting shop. At school road. Oh, him. What, the old soakers always hanging around the place trying to punch money off the punters? Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. He says he's a very close friend of Todd Grant. Todd? That's right. Yeah, well, he's a soft touch, that Todd Grant. He wants to choose his friends more carefully. Macaulay says that Todd came to stay with him when you chucked him out. No business of mine where he goes, officer. He can't behave himself. I would think it was very much your business where he goes, considering that you're extorting money from him. No. You're threatening him? No. Oh. I was interested. I wondered how it started. Was it after Todd smashed up the room in the hostel? What are you talking about? The bloke went ape, you could have hurt somebody. No, the guy was very upset. His gran had just died. It happens. Macaulay says that Todd told you that he could lay his hands on some money to pay for the damages. Now what happened to that money, Mr Boyd? End up on the horses? No. What, did you get greedy? There's plenty more where that came from. And Todd was a soft touch. I mean, you said that yourself, didn't you? Prove it. When did you get greedier still? Went round to the house in Wellstead Street? Because you knew that's where the money would be. All right. You just go ahead and prove it. We've got a witness. And we've got a description. Listen. It's no easy task looking after these people, you know? I'm the one who keeps them on a the straight and they're out of your way. I'm the one who's always picking up the pieces. And what do you get, eh? Accused by some old soak who sent his mother for a bottle full of meth. Yeah. Paul. Sir. Just get Paul. Sir. I've uh, been in touch with the betting shop. Boyd has been going in recently, every day, making large bets, losing too. Good. How's it going in there? Uh, he's stalling. Oh, we don't have much going for us then, do we? If we can keep this up. We've got Macaulay's statement. Allegations made by an alcoholic who lives in a squat. Hardly the most reliable of witnesses to stand up in court, is it? Well, what if I got Todd Grant to give us a statement? I could go over to the squat in Doral Road. I might be able to persuade him. And the man's mentally ill, Bob. How on earth are you going to get through to him? I know, but we don't want Boyd to get away with it, do we? OK, let's arrest Boyd now. That'll give you a bit more time to play with. Thanks. I'll do the honours. Todd! Come on, Todd! 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 Todd, wait! Wait! Todd! 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 Come on! Come on! Wait! Wait! We've got Boyd. We've arrested him. We've got him down at the station. We're questioning him. What's he been saying about me? Been telling you about how bad I've been. About my room. Yeah, I know about that. I've been to Goddard Street. I didn't mean to smash it up. I said sorry. I did. I said sorry. Todd, okay. It's just that... Gran died. See? And she was all I had. I was doing all right till then. A day centre, library. I went to the uh, to the job centre. Um, was coping, but she had a heart attack, and the legs were bad, and she couldn't get to the phone, and I wasn't there. So I stopped taking the pills. No point. And then it all. Voices! And bloody voices! Now, Todd, listen. Huh? Listen to what I'm going to tell you. We've spoken to your mate Macaulay. And he's told us what happened. 
Yeah? You didn't attack anyone, did you? Boyd attacked you. Macaulay got in the way. Martin told him about the money. He couldn't help bragging when you'd had a few. So why didn't you tell us the truth? I was scared. I needed to hide. You should have trusted us. Yeah, yeah. You'd have believed me, wouldn't you? Since when did the police ever believe loonies? That's not fair. You, 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 couldn't, you couldn't wait to get rid of me, could you? I've been chasing around after you all morning. Then you run out on me. Well, I had to check to see the house was okay, see the money was still there. You think Boyd had taken it? It was Gran's money. She saved it up all her life. And because Mum and Dad were dead, she wanted me to have it. 9-2 from Sierra Oscar receiving. Bob. Uh, look, it's all right. Okay? It's not working now. Uh, you got a cigarette? <laughs> no, I don't smoke. Got a machine down at the station. No, no, I, I can't, I can't do that. Now listen, Todd. Your mate, Macaulay, he's made a statement. Right? We want to charge Boyd, but we need more evidence. We need you to come forward. No. Not even for your mate? No, you can't make me! Can you copy? You can't make me! No, no, I can't. I can't make you do anything, Todd. No, you have to want to do it, don't you? I was all right when I was in hospital. Out here, everyone wants something from me. All I want is to be looked after. Well, I don't want anything from you. I just want to help you, help yourself. No, I can't. Is this what your grand would want for you? Hey? It's all I can do, Todd. Good luck. Sierra Hospital 9 2 receiving. I've been trying to get through to you. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ray. I've been negotiating. Well, Boyd's got his solicitor here demanding he be released. Inspector Munro can't stonewall much longer. Any luck? No, tell Inspector Munro that I'll have Sergeant. to... Sergeant! Stand by. Do you think I could have that cigarette? Down the station. Sure, Todd. Why not? 